You've been eating carnivore. Your digestion finally feels normal. Your energy is through the roof. You're lifting heavier weights at the gym. Your mind feels clearer than it has in years. For my patient, Tim, a fit, highly motivated guy who works out six days a week, the carnivore diet felt like a revelation. His bloating disappeared. His afternoon crashes were gone and he finally stopped having to scope out every public restroom. He told me, Doc, I found my forever diet. And honestly, for months, he was right. But then something changed. About six months in, Tim started noticing a discomfort in his stomach. Not the same bloating as before, not quite pain, but an annoying, persistent feeling that sometimes wasn't right. He'd still hit the gym and crush his workouts, but recovery felt slower. His gut, which had been calm and predictable, seemed irritated again. He was frustrated, and I get it, when you find something that worked, the last thing you want to believe is that it could stop working. Here's the thing, healing isn't always linear. Even on a nutrient-dense diet, you can run into issues that have nothing to do with whether the diet is good or bad. One of those hidden players is something most people have never heard of, secretory IgA. Think of it like your gut's frontline security guard. This antibody coats your gut lining, neutralizing harmful invaders before they can get in and helping maintain peace among your gut's residents. When secretory IgA is low, it's like having fewer guards at the door. Troublemakers can sneak in and the whole system can get destabilized. So why would secretory IgA drop? Stress is a big one. And I'm not talking about emotional stress, but also physical stress from intense training, poor sleep or illness, chronic infections, even low grade ones can chip away at your levels. Nutrient deficiencies can play a role too, especially if you've had gut damage in the past. And sometimes the issue was there all along, but it only shows up after you've healed enough to notice the smaller details. On carnivore, most people expect that removing plants, sugars, and processed foods will automatically fix the gut forever. For many, it does wonders. So far, that's been my story. But if your gut's immune defenses, that mucosal lining, are already compromised, you may feel great at first because inflammation goes down. Then start to struggle again when the deeper layers of gut repair aren't fully rebuilt. That doesn't mean the diet has failed you. It means the diet addressed one part of the problem. And now it's time to work on the next layer. For Tim, the first step was testing. We ran a comprehensive stool test that included secretory IgA levels. This isn't a test your average blood panel will show. And I'll definitely be sure to have a link to a test like that in the video comments. You have to look at the gut directly. The results came back. His secretory IgA was low. That gave us a clear target. We also checked the markers for gut inflammation, signs of bacterial overgrowth and nutrient status for things like zinc and vitamin A, both key for rebuilding that protective mucosal layer. Once we knew what we were dealing with, we focused on feeding and repairing that lining. Mucus in the gut isn't just slime. It's a sophisticated glycoprotein matrix made from mucin, and those mucins require very specific building blocks. Tim started adding more collagen-rich foods like oxtail, bone broth, and skin on poultry. He made sure he was getting enough sulfur amino acids from eggs, fish, and organ meats, vitamin A from liver, zinc from oysters and beef, and vitamin D from sunlight and fatty fish were non-negotiables. These nutrients tell your goblet cells, the ones that make mucin, to get to work. He also looked at how to gently stimulate mucus turnover without adding plant foods he didn't want to eat. Warm bone broth became a daily habit, especially post-workout. Slow-cooked meats rich in collagen tissue gave him glycosaminoglycans that help tissue repair. Omega-3s from salmon and sardines helped keep inflammation in check so the mucus layer could actually heal. Boosting secretory IgA production directly can be tricky. Your body makes it. You can't just take it like a pill. But there are ways to encourage it. Colostrum from cows or goats can increase levels and has research backing it. Glutamine, the amino acid that fuels your gut lining cells, became part of his plan too. And because stress, including gym stress, can tank secretory IgA, he worked on sleep optimization, better recovery days, and even some breath work before bed to keep cortisol in check. We also had to make sure nothing was constantly irritating that lining, even on carnivore. There are possible triggers. 
highly processed meats with additives, cooking at very high temperatures that produce AGEs, or for those sensitive to histamine, relying too heavily on aged meat. For Tim, fresh cuts over heavily aged ones made a difference. Now, I know someone's going to ask, Doc, do I have to take these supplements forever? The answer is, usually not. The goal is to use them as a bridge to support the repair process while your gut regenerates. Once your mucosal immunity is back online, most people can taper down or even stop supplementation, relying on nutrient-rich foods to maintain it. The exceptions are those with ongoing stressors or chronic conditions where a small maintenance dose makes sense. But that's the minority. Another question I get, when should I retest? For most people, three to six months is a good window. You need enough time for real changes to happen, but not too long that you waste months on a plan that's not working. Tim retested at the four-month mark and his secretory IgA had doubled. His symptoms were gone. And here's just one more thing to look for beyond just secretory IgA. Sometimes low secretory IgA is part of a bigger picture. If you've got recurrent sinus infections, oral health issues, or skin flare-ups, those can all be linked to the same mucosal immune weakness. If you only fix your gut but ignore those other sites, you may be missing part of the problem. So I'd like to step back and ask, where else in the body might the mucosal barrier be compromised? For Tim, keeping the diet he loved while targeting the root cause of his setbacks was the key. He didn't throw out the baby with the bath water. He doubled down on what worked, made targeted adjustments, and kept training at a high level without sacrificing gut health. If you're on carnivore and your stomach starts aching up months in, don't panic. And don't assume it means you need to quit. Ask questions. Test. Target your repair strategy, and most importantly, give your body the raw materials, the environment, and the time it needs to truly heal. In the comments, I'd love to hear, have you had your gut symptoms return after starting carnivore? What worked for you to get back on track? And if you want more strategies like this, check the playlist and links in the description. We've got a whole series on gut health and making carnivore work for the long haul. Make sure to check out this video here or subscribe to my channel here. Thanks for coming to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.